Yo, what is up everybody, external here. So I've been wondering for a while, can you beat Pokemon Fire Red with only Fire type Pokemon? So, let's find out. Personally, I didn't think it's possible. So of course, we're starting the challenge by naming our character external, which we do for every Pokemon challenge. And since my rival and podcast co-host is named Sean, we're naming him Sean after, well, my podcast co-host. I think that's self-explanatory. And when it comes to the rules, I can only use Fire-type Pokemon, no TM Pokemon. So no Pokemon I catch only for TMs. So that means I can't catch a wild Pokemon that's not Fire-type just for TMs. So here we are. We're picking our starter. Okay, Charmander. I didn't remember which Pokeball was Charmander. Now Charmander, Charmander's in our party. Oh, you picked Squirtle, the one that's strong against us. So, so in this tutorial battle, the only move we have is Scratch and Growl. So you just have to keep... My strategy for this battle was Scratch, Tackle, Scratch. I didn't think it was possible to lose this battle since my rival didn't have any water-type moves yet. And as long as I didn't use Growl, I couldn't lose. So now, here we are in... I think this is Viridian City. Now we're back in Oak's Lab. We just did the delivery for Oak's Parcel. And this is how we get the Pokedex. Which means now we can progress deeper into the game. Which is, of course, a good thing since we want to beat the game with only fire types. Professor Hook takes too long to explain things. Borrow town map. He basically said what to do to go to his house to get the Pokeball. Not the Pokeball, the town map, which we just got. Or, we just got. So now we have to go do the rival battle. Yeah, yeah. we go have to go... First we need to get the running shoes from our mom, which we get right here. Wait. We don't get the running shoes? I thought we got the running shoes. Never mind. We probably get those later in the game. No big deal. But now we need to battle our rival. So here we are. Now, level 8, I can use a fire type move. So I'm using Ember and Scratch. Leveled up, level 9, Squirtle. Scratch, Scratch. I'm using the same strategy from the first battle. Scratch, we lost. Maybe we'll win next time. Okay, here we are. Attempt number two against the rival. Same strategy as last time with Ember to get through Pidgey and then Scratch. We're a bit overleveled for this fight, but no big deal since we lost again. So this time I bought potions to help. Because potions could help. So let's get nine of those. Eh? Seven. Now. Now I think we can win. Since the issue is Squirtle knocks us out too quickly. It doesn't even have a water type move. So. Attempt number three against Sean. Any badges? No, we don't. The guard won't let you through. Our Pokemon have gotten stronger. We outlevel your whole team. And we're just one Pokemon. 
So for Charmander versus Pidgey. Once again, same strategy. Ember to get through Pidgey. And then Scratch and Heal to get through Squirtle. The burn against Pidgey helps since that, that saves us one additional turn. The accuracy was lowered. See, the burn pushes it down a little bit so that a second Ember will one-shot it. As Pidgey just fainted. So now we must rely on, of course, our Charmander, which is level 12, to beat the level 9 Squirtle. So it's Scratch. It's Scratch and Ember are the only two moves that deal damage. But... Ember does very little damage, so we have to Scratch, survive a Tackle, which we did, use another Scratch, it's in yellow health, Tail Whip is a lowering effect move, so that doesn't affect our run. Now we can use Scratch again, get it into mid-yellow, Tackle gets us to 25 health, Scratch knocks it down to red, we're in green health, Scratch, this Scratch should finish the battle which it does, and we just won against a super effective Pokemon. We were over-leveled by three, but if you think that's bad, just wait. <laughs> so we just beat Sean, our rival, which took quite a bit of time, but now our goal is to progress on to Brock. So we're in the wild, Weedle, Ember is super effective against bug type, so Viridian Forest should be easy. Caterpie, Ember, one hit. We're level 15. So at Brock's gym, we could easily avoid all the trainers. And we will, since we are over-leveled. So here we are, the first gym leader, Brock. He has an advantage against our team because he's rock type. Rock type super effective against fire. That's the roadblock here since the first two gyms are super effective. So Brock has two Pokemon. I still have one. Level 12 Geodude versus our level 15 Charmander. So my strategy here is just Metal Claw because that's super effective against his team. So Metal Claw. Geodude's going to attack. The only moves we have to worry about are Rock Tomb mainly. So Metal Claw. Two to three Metal Claws is enough to get through Geodude. As you can see, one more and he should be fine. I wasn't worried at all about Brock since Metal Claw. I knew I could beat Brock in my first or second attempt. As you can see, we just beat Geodude. Now we just have to worry about the ace of his team, which is Onyx. Onyx has, I know, has Rock Tomb, has Bind, and is a much stronger Pokemon, being level 14. So my strategy was Metal Claw again. Super effective. Rock Tomb. This is where I got scared, since it did so much damage. So I had to heal. I did play healing and play offensive at the same time. Metal Claw. Should get us down to yellow. We got a pretty good hit there. Now we should heal so we can survive another rock tomb. Maybe two. This rock tomb should knock us to yellow. And then... Now it's all about out healing. Or at least having more health. So metal claw... Metal Claw hits, knocking down to red. One more hit. We have to survive one more hit. Bind. Metal Claw. Nope. We're healing. So we're healing so we can be above Onyx for one more Rock Tomb. Knocks us back down to yellow. And then this last Metal Claw will finish it off. Metal Claw finishes the battle. And like that, 
we'd beat Brock, the first gym leader. One gym down, eight more, and the Elite Four champion to go. I personally thought Brock would be a, the biggest roadblock possible and that it wouldn't be possible to get past him since, well, he's rock type, which is super effective against fire. So I wasn't expecting much. But now since we beat Brock and we're one eighth through the challenge, we're pretty good. And Charmander evolved. Which meant we can teach Charmeleon some moves that Charmander can't learn. Which means we have one gym badge now. And an evolution. Which is pretty good for early game. First gym having Charmeleon. I've done the same thing before where I make sure before or right after the first gym I have the Pokemon. Since that way, and now, we have the badge, which means Pokemon of a higher level can now listen to us. Now we're on our way to Cerulean City to take on Misty. And we just got the running shoes. I knew I was going to get those eventually. Okay, so you have to hold B. Team Rocket, Zubat versus Charmeleon. Metal Claw, because Metal Claw always helps. One hit KO. Ekans. Metal Claw. Leer. Metal Claw. Battle's over. Or Ember. Battle's over. We defeated Team Rocket. We found the Helix Fossil, which we can't use because it's not a fire type. And we are very limited with fire types since we only have our starter and we have and we have I think one other fire type that's available. And then since we can't use Flareon because we have to evolve it from a non fire type. And the other issue is oh, with Misty. With Misty, we just lost against her Staryu. Second attempt against Misty. Scratch, because I'm doing this same strategy, a similar strategy to Brock, where it's scratch, scratch, first Pokemon down. But you can only get fire types, very few. There's like three in the whole run with, at the very end of the game, I get Moltres. My strategy is now Metal Claw, but we lost. Attempt three against Misty. I went in with the same strategy of scratch to get through Staryu. Recover is the only, the only issue with, with Staryu is Scratch to beat, the critical hit helped, now Metal Claw, Water Pulse is a huge move, as you can see, we're over leveled against, against Misty, but we lost, so now we're gonna go take on our rival to see if we can make any progress. So I used Ember to take out his Pidgeotto. Gust dealt a bit of damage, so did Quick Attack, but Ember managed to finish our Charmeleon's level 24. Scratch against Squirtle. Water Gun deals a bunch of damage. We're reusing our strategy from our last Squirtle fight, except now it has Water Gun, so now we need to manage health, but we lost. So since we leveled up, I wanted to take Misty again, and of course we lost. So we're back fighting Pidgeotto. At this point, I didn't think it's possible since I was like... And I remember having to call Pokemon people, like people who play the game, who do challenges, what to do, like for advice. Since on one way, we can't progress story-wise because we don't have Misty. We can't do Nugget Bridge since we can't beat Sean here. But with Squirtle... I used Scratch, Lower, Water Gun. Scratch, Mist, Water Gun finished us off. We're here fighting Misty again. With each level up, beating Staryu gets easier and easier since Staryu only has Water Gun as a water type move. Against Starmie, of course, we get one hit. And this time, we Scratch to beat Squirtle against Abra. Ember wipes the floor. Rattata, Ember beats him. We beat Sean. 
At this point, I had a tiny bit more hope, since now we could do the Nugget Bridge. We got the fame check. Never going to use that. We went. We visited Bill. Helped him out. And, of course, we helped him uncombine himself with whatever Pokemon it was. It was a Clefairy. Took me a second to process that, but that's a bummer. The SS ticket, which we need to do to get cut. So here we are versing Misty again, Scratch. Since it lowered it, we're going to use Super Potions. This is where my new strategy came in to Super Potion Heal. Recover. We're going to Scratch again. Since we just need to Scratch it as, much time, as many times as possible. Smoke Screen. Because with Smoke Screen, I want to lower its evasiveness so it doesn't always hit. But our new issue is confusion since, and water pulse. With each smoke screen and our new strategy, smoke screen's accuracy lowers. And there's two dangers of, of water pulse, is the water type damage and the possible confu confusion after. But we lost, so we're going to try the new strategy again. Of scratching through Staryu, we need smoke screen to lower the evasiveness or effectiveness of the accuracy of of Starmie since we want water pulse to miss so we don't get one hit or confused and then we only have to worry about recovery which just heals it and swift which is a guaranteed hit but doesn't deal a lot of damage so we're spamming smoke screen we got the floor wiped with us our level 30 charmeleon versus a level 18 star you we use Scratch, we beat it. Smoke screen strategy again. Still have no faith in this run, thinking it's over here. Smoke screen, we block. Smoke screen again, lowering that accuracy, which is quite important. Scratch, water pulse gets us down to 4 HP. We heal up. Swift, scratch, swift, heal. Water pulse, recover. Smoke screen. See, now it's starting to miss. So scratch, swift, scratch. Scratch. It's low, recovers. At this point, I'm not scared because water pulse is so unlikely to actually land. See how it keeps missing? Recover. Now it's a battle of scratch, swift, and recover, which is what I was hoping for. So now I have a little bit of faith. But the only issue is if either we start to struggle because I run out of moves or... Star me starts to struggle and I can't out heal it. So recover, scratch, recover, scratch. At this point, we're in pretty good. Since Swift, I can't lower the chances of. But now my scratch is getting low. One critical hit could finish it. We beat Star me. We did the impossible. We beat the second gym. The water type of gym, which had the advantage against us, we got the Cascade Badge. We now have two badges, which is one-fourth through the thing. Now we get on the, the ship. And, of course, we have to battle Sean again. So we use Ember to get through Pidgeotto. Smokescreen, because we're using the Misty strategy now, which Scratch helps us beat Wartortle. Radicate, we need to worry about Hyper Fang, which we don't since Ember really helped get through the team. Now we can go up to the captain, learn cut. Now the boat sails away. We taught cut to Charmeleon. We cut through the tree. We get to Lieutenant Surge. We Now we battle Lieutenant Surge. Voltorb, Ember, because fire seems to help here. Ember. And Ember, almost down. Thunder Wave, Super Potion, Ember. It's full heal. Now it's in the cut, finished it off. We have three badges. The third gym I wasn't worried about since we had Ember. Now we replace our beloved Ember with Flamethrower, which is slightly better. Now we verse the gamer who doesn't play video games. Ember. Or flamethrower, flamethrower, battle's over. We found the Great Ball. Level 36, Metal Claw against Onyx, Rock Throw, 
This is basically Brock again. Except now we don't have smoke screen. We didn't have it then. Now we have cut and... No, cut, replace, scratch. Charmeleon's evolving. Our all-star Charmander is now our Charizard. Charizard can't learn four moves. We're replacing smoke screen with wing attack, which should come in handy. Charizard's now level 40. One hit Oddish. One hit Pidgey. Level 40. The wild Pokemon are level 20. In this grass, we find Growlithe. Finally, after three gym badges, we get our second teammate. Knocked it down to just enough health. We throw the Pokeball. One. Caught it. Growlithe's now part of the team. Against Ekans. Now we're in the Pokemon Tower. Now we battle Sean Growlithe. Switch out to Charizard. Pidgey, uh, Pidgeotto used Sand Attack. We used Flamethrower. One down. So since Pidgeotto's down, now I can assume it's going to be War Turtle. With War Turtle, now we have to be careful. Wing Attack, which worked. Boom. Growlithe. Same Pokemon we have. Metal Claw. One hit KO. Execute Flamethrower. And then we just have to worry about the Kadabra, which Flamethrower. Still not a big deal. Since we beat that first try, we have to do the ghosts here. But we can't beat them. Against Erico, another sweep happens. Charizard, Flamethrower, one hit KO. Flamethrower, one hit KO. Flamethrower, one hit KO. We won three badges in. With two Pokemon in the bag. So now we're in the Team Rocket hideout. Here we are at Giovanni. An important battle. So we're using Metal Claw because he's super effective. We just did a, that. Metal Claw again. Tail Whip. Not an important move. Wind works. Level 45. Wind Attack. Mega Punch. Metal Claw. We're done. We beat Giovanni. So now we're at the Marowak battle in the tower. Where, because that's the big ghost. We got the self scope from the hideout. We just beat that. Go up to the top floor. Finish off Team Rocket. Talk to the guy in the tower. He brings us to his house. We got the pokey flute. We, now we're battling Sean at the top of Silfco. Wing attack. Wing attack back. We finished Pidgeot. Which means next should be Blastoise. In this case, we're going to use Cut, Protected, use Cut, Water Gun, Cut, Water Gun, Wing Attack, finished it, we beat that, next should be Growlithe, we use Wing Attack, Take Down, Cut, Growlithe, Stun, Flamethrower, we're out of that though, so we have to heal. Or use Cut, which didn't work. Stun Spore missed. Wing Attack. Execute Stun. One more Pokemon left. Alakazam. Wing Attack. Future Sight. Wing Attack. Battle's over. We beat our rival at Selfco. Now we have to go fight Giovanni. Which shouldn't be that bad. So here we are at Giovanni. With Charizard and... So Wing Attack. Oh, the Poison. That's not good. So we use an antidote, heal up, cut, Nidorino's done. Next up is that Metal Claw, half, Rock Blast. So now it's Growlithe, which could barely do anything. Bite, Fury Attack, Bite, Fury Attack, 1 HP, heal up, Rock Blast, battle's over. Better luck next time. So we're back now at Giovanni for a second attempt. Giovanni walked to our side and challenged us. So we're going to try the same strategy as this time, except now we actually went to a Pokemon Center after the rival battle. So Charizard's ready. We're going to start with... We're going to start with Wing Attack. Maybe Metal Claw. Wing Attack. And... Get Nidorino pretty low. Horn Attack. Did barely anything. Poison... 
That's going to put a dent in our plans. Cut. Finish off Nidorino. Now 900 XP. Level 51 Charizard versus... Versus Rhyhorn. Charizard takes poison damage. Now we're going to heal the poison. Since we don't want to poison Pokemon in our team. Now we just need to find the... We don't have anything for poison. That's not good. Which means we're as good as dead. So let's use... What move? We'll use... Flame Tower. Shouldn't deal too much damage. Wow, knocked it out. Not very effective. That's pretty good. Rhyhorn fainted. Charizard gains 1,000 XP. Kangaskhan. Giovanni used Kangaskhan. Charizard is hurt by poison. That's not that much damage. Wing attack. Let's go. Should knock it down a little bit of health. Down to half. Tail whip. Not an offensive move. That's a stat move. Which means we shouldn't have to worry. Just the poison. We're down to 66 health. We're in the yellow. Cut. Rage. Did a tiny bit of damage. Poison should knock us down to red. Or right above red. Now we have to heal. With... With a potion, which doesn't do much. Just gets us up to mid-yellow. Kangas can use Tail Whip. Poison's going to deal its damage. Which should knock us down to maybe red. Maybe right before. Back to where we were. Now we're going to have to fight this with Cut. Knock Kangas can out. To face Giovanni's last Pokemon. Which is Nidoqueen. That's a tough one to beat with a weak Charizard in an underleveled. Say 10 levels above Giovanni. 18 health left. Fl flamethrower or Metal Claw? Metal Claw. So, Tail Whip. The poison's going to end up knocking out Charizard. Not good at all. But. With that, we only have Growlithe, which isn't an ideal situation. So now we have to use Bite, Body Slam, one hit KO, because 20 level difference. And like that, we lost to Giovanni again. Better luck next time. We're out of usable Pokemon. We went to the Pokemon Center. Same old routine we saw with Misty. Except this time, I know it's possible to get past Giovanni. You just need a good move set. Paid 2448 to the winner's prize money. And we took our L. Here we are again with another attempt against Giovanni. But our game plan this time is we can't let ourselves get poisoned. And if we do, we have to heal right away that way the poison can't stick around enough to deal significant damage since if it leaves significant damage we're stuck with Growlithe who is well as you've seen severely under leveled so we have potions and poison heals to be able to deal with that and combat that but for the combat plans like dealing attacks we're using the same attacks of course as last time so we're going to start with cut and cut down on Nidorino. Horn attack won't deal too much. Critical hit did about 25 damage, 26. So we beat Nidorino. One down, four to go. Charizard gained XP, level 52. Not a big surprise. About to use Rhyhorn. Same strategy as last time with Metal Claw. And of course, slashing our way through since... Metal Claw is super effective. This is the same, or Wing Attack, which also works. Wing Attack does a tiny bit of damage. Stomp, pretty good move. Flamethrower, 
hoping on that luck we got previously. We were granted with that luck again, but that also could be due to the 13, 14, maybe 15 level advantage we have over over Rhyhorn. With now two Pokemon left being his Kangaskhan and his Nidoqueen, we don't have to worry about poison till Nidoqueen, which is completely a blessing. So now we have Flamethrower, which we didn't have in the first battle. Flamethrower should do a good chunk of damage, knocking it down to red. Mega Punch should not do too much. Knock this down to yellow, high yellow. Cut, finishes off Kangaskhan, and now it's just Charizard with a backup of Growlithe versus Nidoqueen. It's looking good this time. Nothing to worry about. We're going to keep Charizard in since we don't want to mess this up. So now we're going to start with a wing attack. See how much that does. A little bit. This is where we get hurt by the poison point. Since Tail Whip, luckily not a damaging move, since this is poison ground, so could be a bit fatal. So Metal Claw, or flame Flamethrower. The Flamethrower can at least try to inflict a burn, maybe do a tiny bit of damage. And it did more than expected. It finished off... Team Rocket Leader Giovanni. Now we just have to race to the Pokemon Center to heal up Charizard. But before that, we ruined your plans. You'll never forget. Well, we'll beat you when we go see you in the gym. When we see you in the last gym. But here we are. Now we get our reward and how we're going to catch Moltres at... The team, not Team Rocket Headquarters, at the end of the game, at Victory Road, the Master Ball, which we're going to use for Moltres as our third and final team member. It's our prototype Master Ball. If it's a prototype, how come there's one in, like, every region? Just wondering. You can't buy that anywhere. It's our secret prototype. Seems like every company that Team Rocket takes over, or not Team Rocket, the villain team takes over, there's a Master Ball there. What's the coincidence with that? That's what I thought. Catch any Pokemon without fail. Be quiet about using it, though. Okay. Now with that defeated, we have to go beat the fourth gym leader, Sabrina. Who, from experience, shouldn't be too bad. Because, well, we beat Sean's Alakazam so easily with Charmander, Charmeleon, and Charizard. So, here we use Flamethrower. Should one-shot. It did, of course. Last two gyms have been pretty easy. Flamethrower... You know the deal. With with the third, fourth, and fifth gym, dealing with these Pokemon isn't too bad because one, we're over-leveled. We're level 52. Alakazam, we're at her ace already. People are saying this gym is where we were going to meet our demise, but I don't think that's the case since we just defeated Sabrina and got ourselves the fifth gym badge. Our next site's are Koga, the Poison-type gym leader, but first Snorlax, of course. We have to battle Snorlax, and Snorlax is level 30. You can't reach Snorlax till after you get the Poke Flute, which we got before challenging self Cow. And with that, we got Snorlax low, as long as he doesn't use the sleep thing, or rest, which he just did. Rest's gonna heal him back up, but now he can't attack. So now we have a certain amount of turns to beat him before he does any attacks. Most likely uses rest again. Oh, the Chesto Berry just woke itself up. That's not good. So we have to use Flamethrower again. Hope this one knocks out, getting us our victory. So it did way less than last time. Used Yawn, which has a chance of putting Charizard to sleep. We can't lose CEO Charizard. The one who carried our team. So wing attack. Hopefully knocks out Snorlax. Which it did. Which means now. Of course. We're on our way to beat Koga. Snorlax came down. Gave a big yawn. And returned to the mountains. Never knew Snorlax was from the mountains. 
We're in the invisible maze with Koga. Time to take on the sixth gym leader, Koga. And earn whatever gym badge this is. I don't remember. So Koga's poison type, which means we're going to have to use the Giovanni strategy, where we're going to have to heal up. Luckily, coughing Ekans are weak to flamethrower and just easily get destroyed by it, just like the Voltorbs and Magnemites we saw earlier in the game. But we have to worry for Pokemon with poison type, which is why we're using the potion, the potion strategy alongside the heal strategy. Level 57, our Charizard stands, Muck. I think Muck has, well, Muck has Poison Point. So, what we're going to do now is Flamethrower. Pretty simple strategy, Flamethrower. We're just going to use that to completely annihilate Muck, since we don't give a fuck. So next up in Koga's team is Coughing, another easy kill. Just flamethrower, and that's the end of coughing. We don't have to worry about that much, since well, the the everything past the second gym isn't bad. Third gym was easy. Fourth gym was cakewalk. Fifth gym was a cakewalk. This gym's a cakewalk. Flamethrower. Just completely destroy coughing. As you can see, coughing just fainted using Flame Tower. And who's our next and final opponent in Koga's team? You'll find out next time on Pokemon. Wow, that joke was bad. Not that bad, though. It's kind of true. But wheezing. It's funny how coughing, wheezing are both like terms for coughing. I find that funny. Like wheezing's a more extreme coughing. Same with Pokemon. Flamethrower, level 43 Weezing versus our 57 Charizard. And we absolutely shit on Koga. Not bad. We've earned our 6th gym badge. Now we have... We have 6 gym badges. Next up is Blaine on... Of course... What is it? What island is it called? I can't even remember. Cinnabar Island. Next up is Cinnabar Island. Now, we need to, of course, evolve our Growlithe. And once we evolve Growlithe, but first we need to get Fly so we can get... We need to get Fly and we need to get a Firestone. Let's see, do I have a Firestone? No, we have to go get to go get fly so here we are and we got fly no we got surf never mind not fly we have fly we got surf from the safari zone which we need we bought the firestone here we go Growlithe evolving level 20 arcanine our team is now fully evolved we can't teach arcanine surf we can't well arcanine's about an ember this ekans just completely fuck over ekans not too shabby at all. Arcanine gained 88 XP. Defeated. Charizard used cut. Went back. We just got fly. Now we can fly back to Pallet Town. Okay, one, two, three. Forgot. Wing attack. Learned fly. Used fly. We're back home. And this is the issue. You can't. Learn Surf, which means we can't get to Cinnabar, which means our run's over. Thank you guys for watching. And to confirm, Pokemon Fire Red is not possible with only Fire types.